Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. All right, we made it out of ye old medieval village, narrowly escaping the falling anvils and dissecting lances, but looks like we're out of the frying pan and into the fire, as we'll have to navigate the treacherous forest of the many non-cardiac etiologies of chest pain. When approaching a patient with chest pain, it's important to rule out the life-threatening causes first, as timing can be critical. Let's get to it. If a patient presents after returning from an international vacation with pleuritic chest pain, dyspnea, and asymmetric leg swelling, pulmonary embolism should be on the top of your differential. Just like blood clots are basically tangled heaps of platelets and fibrin, we've represented them with a bird's nest in a lung-shaped tree. Aside from chest pain and dyspnea, Patients will often present with tachycardia and, in massive PEs, hypoxia and hemodynamic collapse. Once you suspect a PE, look deep into this well until you see the darkness of your soul reflected back at you. Or just use the validated Wells probability score to assess for signs of deep vein thrombosis and other risk factors, followed by the PERC rule to guide your diagnostic evaluation. Don't worry, we'll discuss how to assess and evaluate serious causes of chest pain in more detail in our chest pain assessment and plan sketch, so be sure to check that out. For now, let's ditch these creepy woods and head back to the riverbank, where there's a boat headed our way. Ugh, looks like the wind has taken out one of its sails. This collapsed, lung-shaped sail is our symbol for pneumothorax, which occurs when air enters the pleural space and causes the lung to collapse. You can suspect a primary spontaneous pneumothorax in patients, particularly young, tall, thin patients who are assigned male at birth, who have no history of lung disease, but present with unilateral pleuritic chest pain, dyspnea, decreased chest excursion, enlarged hemothorax, and hyperresonant percussion sounds. In patients with underlying lung disease, spontaneous pneumo can occur secondary to conditions like COPD. A more serious scenario, however, is when air in the pleural space displaces mediastinal structures, meaning you have a tension pneumo on your hands. This is symbolized by this taut rope under high tension over the collapsed sail. Patients typically have rapid onset dyspnea, tachycardia, tachypnea, hypotension, and tracheal deviation, and they need prompt intervention. Huh. Just in the nick of time, the captain of the boat has come on deck to lend a hand, but from the looks of this dirty lung vest, our symbol for pneumonia, and his flame bandana, this feverish commander needs to take a breather. Along with chest pain, fever, productive cough, and breathlessness are common symptoms of pneumonia. Some superstitious old sea dogs believe that white birds soaring above the sails are a good sign of becoming lost at sea, but high-flying white birds are our recurring symbol for high white blood cell count, or leukocytosis the most common blood test abnormality in patients with pneumonia. Imaging studies would certainly back up this diagnosis. These patients should undergo chest x-ray for further evaluation. 